Hey, it's Joe Lyons, and in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how you can use edit replacements in Auto Hockey Studio. So, edit replacements kind of think of them as hot strings on crack, right? It allows you has some functionality built into it where you can um, have like an input box almost come up and ask you questions or something, and you can decide where you want to leave your carrot or your cursor. Um, so first to get to them well let me demonstrate a couple here real quick so like when i type m period space it dumps in message box percent for me so by the way for those of you who who also use hot strings it's kind of ironic right because studio um doesn't do well with hot strings when you try to do hot strings in it often they'll, they'll mess up uh, but this is a way using the edit replacements to actually have hot strings um you just got to build them inside studio and then they work great but um so, so, but it is more powerful than that. So there's that. And let's say you were doing a for loop. So I can say, if I do like AB space, so it says for AB in, and it leaves me right there. And then the next line, often if I'm doing a double nested, so CD space, right? And it dumps me in here. So it's a quick, easy way to have things at your fingertips. You can have a lot more than that, right? And that's what I'm gonna demonstrate here. So let's get to the edit replacements window. So of course you bring up the Omnisearch. I type ER and that usually jumps right to it, hit enter. And this window will pop up. Here are the, the ones I have built it that I've added, um, or Mace Truth has added for me, because he will program a lot on my computer. And um, it's that simple of like, I can put in, um, when I type, um, well, let's see, there we got A, B, C, D, let's do E, F. So when I type E, F, I'll do four E comma F in. The, now the dollar sign E, um, this is what tells the edit replacements to say, leave me at the end of this line. Um, it probably would have anyway, but it's nice to have it where it'll leave you right there. If I had put a pipe, um, it would have, it, well, it would have put me there, but um, if I put a pipe, um, a dollar sign pipe here, it would leave me right after the four. Um, it'll leave the carrot right after the four. But first, let's, let's do this one as an example. So I'm going to add it. Um, and so that was what, EF, I think? It takes a second to close. And EF space, and so there it is. And notice where my cursor is. But um, let's say for whatever reason, um, edit replacements, I wanted to um, be at the beginning. So let's say I was gonna um, do one where I wanted to save an element from an ID. So I'm um, gonna say, um, or let's do get element. Um, I'll, I'll do save element. All right. So this is gonna be um, now. Here is where I'm gonna say I'm gonna put in a dollar sign. I can do it one of two ways. So I'm gonna do a dollar sign pipe because I want to leave. I want it to come back here. I want my cursor to be there when I'm ready to do some typing. Um, so dollar sign pipe equals pwb dot document dot get t blah. Actually, you know what? Let's let's go ahead and do this one. Let's say we know the name of the ID. This is where you would put the. Um, I can put in actually. I can put in um, dollar sign and then uh, whatever you want. I'm going to put var. Actually, I'll put ID so it's meaningful. And we'll do inner text. All right, now I'm gonna add this and close. Actually, I gotta remember here, so SE. Let me screenshot that for me. Um, add. And now, um, You'll notice when I type SE space, it comes up with this input box and says, hey, what do you want to replace for ID? And it reminds you this is what you're you're doing. An ID is going to be, let's say it was the name of the ID, which was um, password. Now, when I hit OK, it's going to dump in my code, but notice where my cursor is, right? It's to the far left. Um, so I would say password is the name of the variable. Now, of course... Let me go back into um, alt M E R. Let me change this where this one I could have said um, 
this is going to be var, right? And actually, I don't want to put the dollar sign pipe. Oops, get rid of the pipe. I'm going to say dollar sign var. And now let's add it and close this. And now this time, it'll have two levels, right? Two input boxes. And so I think it was SE. So it says, what's the replacement for ID? That is going to be what I say password before. And what's the name of the variable? Let's just call it pass. So now it populated those in there for me, right? It's, um, it's just handy. Once you get used to the flow of it, it's very handy to be able to do that. Uh, but let me give you one more example here. So for my for loop, I can say FL um, period and then a space. Well, you just got to trigger it. So here's what's the replacement for row. So in this, this is my for loop template where I loop over um, an, uh, a variable that has multi rows of text um, with a line breaks parsing on it. And so the first one is going to be um, inside my call. So notice here, I, I have row here and then row here and here and here and here and here and here, right? So this is what's really cool about it is, is that uh, let's call it line. I wanted to use line in this instance. Um, and it did two things. So notice line is all in here instead of saying row, right? It dumped it in everywhere. If I click on one, we'll see it. So it's lines, a lot of, did a lot of replacements for me. Um, also, which I shouldn't have, I should have put out first, but um, I had told it the to put my focus here so I could type the name of the variable I'm splitting over. Of course, I could have had that in, um, I think I will go back and say, let's, let's go ahead and change that. So... First, let's get rid of all this. Alt M E R, and let's get down to my for loop. And so, right here, I had the dollar sign pipe, but I'm going to put in um, var because that's going to be the the variable that has a text. And so, often, even though I'm splitting over something, that variable isn't always the same. And this way, it's going to ask me some um, for what to change that to. And then I don't have to go remember because it's pretty easy to click out of that if you're not paying attention, right? So let me close this. And then FL period space. So what do I want to place for row? Let's do um, line lines, whatever. It doesn't matter. And then the var. So this is where I would say it's like, what's the variable I'm looping over? Um, it'll be text data. And so notice text data got dumped in here this time. And all of my stuff is in here um, with with li lines instead of line, right? So it, it's pretty powerful. It also allows um, the personal variables do not allow for spaces, but the edit replacements do. So if you have something that you wanted to have in your personal variable list, but it has a space in it, like um, my message box, right? I had a space both after that and in here, and I can't do that in the personal variable list, but the editor replacement you can. So it um, takes a little bit of practice, but um, when you when you have a bunch of stuff that you copy, I mean, I love hot strings, right? And this was a battle. Um, we, we, we found a couple other workarounds, but this works great too, if you can have these at your fingertips. And, and allowing that input, right, of, of asking you a question of what do you want in your little placeholders, and then it, then it puts them throughout the code. Super helpful. Awesome. Anyway, have a great day. Bye.